me at the time of the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. May we enjoy Christ 24 hours. With that, the title for today is the book of Acts that I write. The expository preaching of the book of Acts ends with today's sermon. The book of Acts is the start of active evangelism and missions journey of the apostles that the, and the disciples. After experiencing the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in Mark's upper room on the day of Pentecost, the evangelists who held on to the covenant of the three onlys began the journey like a panorama that initiatively changed the field. The martyr of Stephen became a trigger for the disciples to spread to the field of the whole world, and God changed the persecutor Saul into evangelist Paul and raised him as an apostle for the Gentiles. Before, there was no salvation for the Gentiles, and they all had to go to hell. But God had raised him as the apostle for the Gentiles, and he had preached the gospel to the whole world. Acts 9.15 reads, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. In order to carry out this mission by Jesus Christ, Paul challenged staking his life with one heart whole heart in continuation. May this voice be able to be heard to you as well, as you are the chosen vessel. So may you save your families and your field with this mission. Paul did not do this when he had time or as a hobby. It was a life-staking walk of faith for Asia Minor. Macedonia and Rome, he went all in and fully focused on this. And finally, Paul entered Rome. Today's passage, Acts chapter 28, is the last chapter of Acts. However, Paul entered Rome. Paul entering Rome is an open ending, according to the biblical scholars. It means that the book is not finished, but it continues. It's the only book that still continues, even if it has ended. The author of the book of Acts, Luke, ends with the last verse in present tense that Paul is proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Teaching. Luke, in this book, does not contain the conclusion unlike the other books, the four Gospels and Epistles. This is very important. Even Paul's mission's journey ends in an unfinished form. This is to say that the purpose of recording the book of Acts is not to explain Apostle Paul's life story, but to introduce the ministry of the Holy Spirit that spreads the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's why it is expressed that the book of Acts is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The proclamation of the gospel started with Jerusalem and was relayed to the evangelization of Rome, which was the center of the world at that time. And it does not stop there, but it strongly points to the new beginning of missions that spreads to the whole world from Rome. The book of Acts that Luke wrote comes to an end, but we must continue to live a life that writes a sequel of the book of Acts. Our life must be the book of Acts. 
we must record the chapter of Acts chapter 29. As I deliver the word from the book of Acts, I just suggested that you write down your own book of Acts. Are you still continuing with it? It's suddenly very quiet. There are various ways to define the walk of faith, and one of them can be the life of writing the book of Acts, my personal book of Acts, especially in Yeoan Church. Even if you just follow the schedule of Yeoan Church, it will be recorded. The life of the book of Acts. Of course, we are not apostles, but it means that we also have to record and write down the book of evangelism and missions that the apostles undertook. In today's passage, in verse 16, Paul finally entered Rome. It reads, I must also see Rome. For you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. In front of the Emperor Caesar. The time schedule for the fulfillment of the covenant had come. However, this experience was not that of a victorious general in war. He entered Rome with the appearance of an insignificant prisoner. Yet the influence of the gospel that Paul spread in Rome was truly remarkable. Through today's passage, May you receive the answer to how Paul boldly spread the influence of the gospel without hesitation in the form of a prisoner. In the name of the Lord, I bless all believers of Yohan Church to stand as the main figures of the sequel of the book of Acts. Number one, nonstop spreading of the gospel. Verse 16 reads, And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. We can see from Paul's entrance into Rome as a prisoner that he didn't experience the typical prison life. The fact that he was allowed to stay on his own indicates that despite being a prisoner, Paul had attained significant freedom. In today's terms, we could say that he was under house arrest. This situation was possible because of the 275 people who had shared life and death with Paul in the midst of the storm northeaster that had spread the word about everything that had happened during the turbulent journey. Particularly, the chief centurion Julius, who was responsible for Paul's escort, had requested for Paul to be treated with the utmost kindness, providing detailed reports to ensure this. The Northeaster storm had become a crucial turning point for preaching the gospel. Likewise, I urge you to not worry about the Northeaster storms in your lives. Do you think that you'll die? Do you think that the Heavens have crumbled down in front of you. Can you not eat? Are you suffering? I've experienced that. I'm someone who experienced greater sufferings. Have you ever slept 15 years on the chair, calling on to the Lord, being frustrated, going to the prayer centers all over Korea? Taking hundreds of young adults doing a movement to do evangelization. But in the end, God made everything for the good. It was all blessings. Men who are saved, you are in the ark. You are inside Christ. So what if you fight, receive scars, give scars? When you're in the ark, as there is only salvation within the ark, 
acts like there are people are flapping their arms, wanting to live. So what if you go to the bathroom in the ark? You are in the ark of salvation. Amen? Do not be deceived. Trust in God's plan who orchestrates everything for the good. Trust that everything in the midst of storms, God will turn them into pathways to save lives. So what is the plan of God? What does it mean to make everything for the good? It is the pathway to save lives. In today's passage, verse 30 describes the Apostle Paul's situation of testifying of the gospel with being under house arrest. So we have a visitor. And he is a politician. But he says as he is a politician, he has to go to this church and that church. And I said, that is not correct worship. So I brought them to acceptance. So, of course, they're going to face so many storms. We have to pray for the politicians because if they go through difficult times, we suffer. We have to pray so that they, the Holy Spirit would work upon them. Whether it is those who are in the financial field or in the political field, we must pray for them. In the Korean text, it says staying in his own house, but in the English Bible, it is recorded as at his own expense in the house he rented. But how could Paul afford this? Clearly, he didn't have money, especially considering status of his house arrest. So how was he able to cover these expenses? It was possible because of the church like the Philippian church that continuously sent missions offering. It is not through such calculations. These offerings allowed him to pay the rent and host guests who came to visit. Not leaving a day, he preached the gospel. It is recorded in the Bible during last Friday's prayer meeting. The missions committee proposed a 237 missions funding through the 237 missions briefing. Last year was marked with the year of the church consecration. And we had given church consecration in 35 years, and this year is the beginning of our year for missions. In honor of the 237 missions, we are sending out, we want to prioritize missionaries that we're sending out, we want to prioritize and provide concrete and practical support for the specific mission fields. In simpler terms, the goal is to eliminate any hindrances in preventing missions due to the lack of resources. The reality is that if you visit the mission fields, you will see urgent need for assistance. So I have asked the business people to do this for Pakistan, India. Malaysia, Indonesia, it's all over. There are so many populations there. And our missionary, Moon Shik Chang, he's saying, if pastor, you come, 
I will be able to gather a thousand pastors, but we must see it with great detail. So like so, there are many people who want help, wanting to establish the partisan. There are many places that do not have sanctuaries for worship and countries where they don't have transportation systems and cars because they live with 200 or 300 dollars a month so doing that and doing missions in that field of course they are facing many limitations So the missions committee has thoroughly analyzed all the mission fields to understand what needs to be fulfilled and what strategies we need to employ. Starting from the year 2024, the aim is to boldly engage in missions, just like Apostle Paul. Actually, I didn't say a word, but the missions committee centered around the council has been leading all the initiatives and have simply received the reports. And that is why I said that I would pray. As there are such precious leaders of the Holy Spirit, how can they know in advance of what God, what the Holy Spirit and what the pastor wants? I was so touched. I could not express it in words, so I just prayed, saying, God, I'm so thankful. Raising such elders and being able to make them go in the forefront for missions, because they did their best for church consecration, but now they are wanting to go in the forefront of missions. So we have decided to raise 2.37 billion won and the head of missions committee had pledged 237 million won first for the evangelism of the 237 nations. Next week, as we celebrate our 36th year anniversary, I'll provide specific instructions on how all our believers can contribute to this mission's exertion. The important thing is for everyone to devote themselves wholeheartedly. When God calls you tonight, what will you say? I went all in for missions and came. So when I established the church in Mukdong, I wrote, go and send. Whether you go to missions or what, there you send. May you go or send as well. I promise not to talk about offering from the pulpit after the main sanctuary dedication service. However, it was our church elders who suggested it to me first before I even asked them. I don't mind. I have no sin. I kept a promise, but it was the elders. Why would I stop our elders from being devoted to giving the greatest glory and receiving blessings from God? There's reward from heaven for all the ministries that constantly spread the gospel. I hope that everyone will participate with the hearts and 237 missions funding and become key players in the mission's work. In verse 16 of today's passage, there was one soldier assigned to guard Paul. Since Paul was a winning trial by the Roman Emperor, he was under the surveillance of the Roman Emperor's army, which the guards were the Roman which were the guards were the Roman Emperor. According to the Roman law at that time, the prisoner was typically chained together 
with two soldiers to prevent escape. However, only one soldier was assigned to Paul. As they had already determined, Paul had no risk of flight. The important thing is that instead of having one soldier from the Roman emperor's army to constantly watch the prisoner, they took turns to watch him. During their duty hours, they had no choice but to stay with Paul. What does this mean? They were easy prey for Paul. The perfect environment for the team ministry was formed. There is a reason why the soldier of the guard is important. Ancient kings hired the most trustworthy individuals in their personal guards since their safety was a concern. The soldiers of the guards were elite soldiers of that time. Think about it. Jesus was born in a manger, being a son of a carpenter. And Paul was entering Rome as a prisoner. But God had a plan for this. At the time, there were approximately 10,000 soldiers of the guard in Rome at that time. In fact, it was nearly impossible to regularly meet these soldiers for the guards. Many politicians who ruled Rome also came from the elite soldier groups. From a strategic mission perspective, if the soldier of the guard from the elite force was changed by the gospel, Rome was bound to be changed as well. When you look at the politicians, you can see that they had the background of being soldiers. the elite force. In the midst of God's detailed guidance, Paul was able to preach the gospel to the core figures of Rome. On the other hand, in verses 17 and 23, we can see that Paul invited the local Jewish leaders to preach the gospel to them. This is something that average people cannot understand. Throughout Paul's 30 years of journey for missions, the Jews constantly persecuted Paul. Paul's missions journey can be described as a period of persecution to the extent that the Jews made every effort to kill him. For 30 years, they gave Paul a very difficult time. There were elite groups that had said, I would not eat nor sleep if Paul did not die. Nevertheless, Paul still loved his own people. Paul was agonized and wondered why his own people couldn't ex accept the gospel, whereas the Gentiles accepted it so willingly. Paul met the resurrected Jesus. He went to heaven. So it was so unfortunate that his people would not be able to receive salvation. But they would not receive the gospel, so he was agonized. The Gentiles were receiving the gospel so well, but how come their people were not receiving the gospel? In Romans 9.3, it reads, For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. This confession by Paul shows the intensity of his feelings. His passionate love for souls became the driving force that enabled Paul to constantly testify the gospel. To save the souls, 
So whoever you meet, you must preach the gospel. You have to pay the price. When would I meet those politicians of visitation? Then what must we preach? We must make them come to acceptance to Jesus Christ. It was that for Paul. So I gave a couple of books to them because we did not have much time saying that there is the answer of life within this, why we live, why we have to become politicians. It's all within that. If we love the souls, we'll be spiritually awake. And whether we eat or not, it does not matter. Our situation does not matter as Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all problems. Being a prisoner, if the gospel is pre preached, do you think you'll be able to receive grace? Being a prisoner, don't worry about your appearance. Oh, but I'm like this. Oh, if that per if I preach the gospel to them, he'll mock me. No, Paul preached the gospel as a prisoner. Amen. So may you be able to live a life without stop of preaching the gospel. Number two, baptism of light raised in Rome. Verse 23. Paul continued to testify to, of the gospel while being under house arrest. He had schedules to meet with many people throughout the day, bearing witness to the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. In other words, he was able to establish the partisan of light. May you be able to establish the partisan of light as well. Verses 30 to 31. Paul's trial did not proceed immediately because there were many people awaiting trial before the emperor at that time. And back then, it's that the emperor had chosen the time for trial. Trials were not conducted under a regular basis, and they were subject to the emperor's discretion. For Paul, this period became an opportunity to firmly establish the partisan of Christ in Rome. During these two years of residence, he shared the gospel with numerous people and wrote precious letters such as Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. In verse 30, it is mentioned that Paul welcomed all the people who came to him. The term welcomed here is epidecto in Greek, which is an imperfect tense indicating a continuous action or a state. This means that the people kept coming to Paul and that he continued to receive them. Paul encountered numerous individuals, including both Jews and Gentiles, and he shared the gospel with them. Importantly, even members of the Roman elite were exposed to the gospel through Paul's ministry. In historical records, we find examples of members of the Roman Senate, such as the son of a senator named Publius who received the gospel through Paul and welcomed many into his household. Therefore, after a period of two years, while Paul stayed in Rome, the Jewish leaders from Jerusalem did not bring any accusa accusations against him before the Roman emperor. People have offered to stand as grantor for Paul, which led to his release. Following this, Paul received support for his mission journey from people and traveled to places like Ephesus, Macedonia, Dilemma, Greek, and Nicopolis. 
where he continued to testify of the gospel. However, around AD 67, he was imprisoned again and ultimately martyred under the reign of Emperor Nero. Through Paul, who fulfilled his missions, he encountered martyrdom and the message that he preached continued to transform people. Eventually, in 313, under Emperor Constantine, Christianity was officially recognized fulfilling the covenant of the evangelization of Rome. In verse 23 and 31 of today's passage, we can see that the core message that Paul delivered to them was about the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. In the field where Jesus is preached, the kingdom of God comes to effect. A new heaven and a new earth are bound to come. The force of darkness crumbled down in the name of Jesus. Do you have insomnia, nightmares, panic disorders, depression? When shining the light of Jesus Christ to those who are trapped in various curses and suffering under the influence of Satan, the kingdom of God comes into their hearts. The renowned Christian apologist, author, Os Guinness, emphasizes in this book the call that one should not confuse the end of a profession with the end of a calling. What does that mean? One can retire from a job or a business, but there is no retirement from the calling that God has given you. This is a spiritual attitude that we should carry throughout our lives. Let us confess together, there is no retirement in the work of God. Amen? There is no retirement in the work of God. Look at me, there is no retirement. Amen? How long do you have to be in your way of life? How old do you have to be in order to retire? lying in bed. In the name of the Lord, I bless all Yoan believers of Yoan Church to be able to carry on that mission until you stand before God. May you be the absolute disciples of Christ, boldly and without hesitation, proclaiming everything about the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ just like Apostle Paul. Think about America. If a pastor retires, he has to move 40 kilometers away from the church. Upon that, as it is the law, they have to carry that on. So, how is that the gospel? Upon the church that God had raised. There is the battle and fights within the church. It means that they don't have the gospel. What is the conclusion? It is the fall. How is that the gospel? How is that the church? May you be able to remember the grace that God has given you in all moments. Oh, now our pastor is old. Oh, now he has no strength. Oh, now he can't carry on. 
Don't worry, I'll end it before I hear that. For the believers all our lives. May be able to proclaim that Jesus is the Christ boldly, without stop, being the absolute disciples of Christ. This is the conclusion. The Asian Games held in Hangzhou, China, finished today. I was so happy yesterday. Soccer, baseball, we got all the gold medals. Soccer and baseball are the flowers of sports. The Korean athletes won many medals in this competition, but there was one unfortunate incident. It was in the men's roller skating 3,000 meter relay race. There was an absurd turn of events where the last Korean runner who had been leading until the very end had almost the gold medal in front of his hands, but he raised both arms and triumphantly was going in. But just before the finish line, the Taiwanese athlete who had been closely chasing from behind extended his foot, resulting in a change of medal color by a 0.01 second difference. Winning the gold medal would have meant exemption from the military service and other various benefits. But all of it was disappeared in the moment of gratification for the athletes it's very important that they don't go to the army because when they go to the army, they lose two years and they lose their sense within sports. How deeply wounded must that person would have been? It is truly heartbreaking. We must not let our guard down even in our lives, within our spiritual lives. What's crucial is to live with one heart, whole heart, and continuation until the end. It's until the end. We need to write the sequel of the Book of Acts in the field of our lives and in the missions field of the 237 nations. I pray that we give all our heart and go all in and focus until the moment we carry out the mission that God has entrusted us in the name of the Lord I bless you in the name of the Lord that we all stand as a leader of missions for the two three seven nations receiving the crown of glory bestowed by God and possessing all the nations let us pray dear father God may we be the main figures of the non-stopping gospel proclamation in our workplace in our fields may we be the main figures where we daily record the book of acts chapter 29 in jesus christ's name we pray amen